All right. Uh, welcome to the uh, to the second lecture that I'm uh, going to be giving for this uh, high performance deep learning course. Uh, today we're going to talk a bit about large scale hyperparameter searches. Um, and so the setup of the lecture will be a bit different. So uh, we're going to go a bit through the goal that we want here, a bit the building blocks. But I will also, you know, switch back and forth through a bit of uh, a bit of code uh, that I wrote for this part, and then we can see how stuff uh, is implemented. Um, but I already want to iterate. Uh, you know, it's not the expectation that you immediately understand all the lines of code that are written there, because you know, uh, for everyone, it's of course a bit of black magic at the start. Um, but it's more to to try and get the, the 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 big picture across, like where are the different building blocks implemented how do they work a bit together and then you know some things we will uh, understand a bit in more detail uh, than others and um, yeah in the tutorial we will uh, we'll get a bit more into uh, detail on some of these uh, modules so let me uh, let me open up this and guy maybe make this a little bit larger like this all right so very well so the high performance deep learning yes yeah, so large scale high parameters um the overview here today is as follows actually i'm going to start out with the <laughs> the end goal that we want to achieve so that's going to show us what is the uh the setup that we want to have and what uh, parts should it include uh and then afterwards i will shortly mention all of the building blocks a bit and also go a bit, bit back and forth through uh, the code and show you where it is implemented and uh, why. Uh, all right, so um, what do we want from our hyperparameter searches, right? That is a bit the question. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, okay, so the first thing we want is to do uh, as little labor as possible, right? We want to be uh, as lazy as it uh, is allowed. Um, so we want to prevent situations where for each you know, different hyperparameter setup, uh, whatever that hyperparameters may be, models, data, I don't care, uh, we don't want to be you know, manually changing the code and then resubmitting it and rerunning it because that is going to be uh, very laborious and you know, when you have really large scale, when you really want to test a lot of things, it is practically impossible. Um, so ideally what we want to end up with is um, uh, is a scenario where we can just change one line of code which just specifies these are the new hyperparameters and then we're going to you know just submit that again and it will take care of everything for us you know, that is uh, that is what we want to achieve um, uh, besides that we also want to be you know in a possibility to track our experiments uh, conveniently and also uh, on the go so as the searches are on their way we want to be able to uh, to see you know what is uh, what is going on all right uh, and the next one is going to be uh, a feature that automates uh, searches so that we can say you know, we want to optimize a certain metric, for example, the validation accuracy, or it can be multiple. Uh, and then we, we put in a range of hyperparameters in which it is allowed to search. And then it's going to automatically uh, figure out uh, what is the best option within that uh, range of values. Uh, and that falls usually under a class of Bayesian uh, search uh, optimizations. Um, and you know, we will not go into detail how those work exactly because that's another <laughs> another course on its own but i will show you a, a little bit um, how to do it um, and the last thing of course we want to be able to scale this to large amounts of uh, of compute um, uh, anyway so the um the code for the uh, for the for this part uh, is uh, at this link. I'll also include it in the description, and then you can study it a bit uh, in more detail uh, later on. So let me give you, however, the summary, the outline of the code as to what it is uh, going to be doing. So the only thing that we as humans are going to do is 
set up a selection of hyperparameters in a bash script. And then after that's done, we're going to use slurm, which is a cluster thing, and use the command sbatch uh, and you know just get this uh, this file into slurm. Now, what the code is going to do, so these are steps that actually are done automatically for you. It's going to, the first thing it's going to do is you're going to reserve a CPU node. So there are no GPUs for running the code yet. Um, and this, you know, I call it the hyperparameter master node. It's the one that, you know, controls everything and will ask for different nodes and will do all of other things. Um, and on this master node, there will be a uh, so-called MLflow server. So MLflow will talk about it a bit more in a second um, but it's a, a way to log uh, the uh, the hyperparameter search and we're gonna see how that works exactly but it's run on the on the central node here and all the other nodes will report to this node their findings uh, all right so it's also going to determine how many other nodes do I have to spawn right for all the different hyperparameters because you know, each new node will get one specific set of hyperparameters and this guy will distribute it and uh, uh, also spawn it, uh, which is uh, the fourth step. And then, of course, whilst this is all going on, um, the nodes all report their results back to the central uh, hyperparameter server to this ML flow server, and then you know we can simply look at this ML flow server, for example, through port forwarding or whatnot, uh, and see you know what happens, and then in the end we can just uh, you know, sit back and uh, relax as everything <laughs> rolls in for us. So just to give you an example, uh, what does it look like? Um, so this is uh, an example of the ML flow UI. We'll look at it in a bit more detail later on. Um, but here you can see on the left hand side, there's all kinds of experiments. So each one of the experiments doing their own hyperparameters. So uh, here on the right hand side, we really have one specific one uh, of these experiments. And on the bottom, you see there were four um, specific hyperparameters tested out. Um, and, you know, all of them reported back here. Now, in the green mark just says that it is done, you know, they have completed their run. Um, and all of them had a specific set of hyperparameters, and we can look at them and find the accuracy and uh, everything and more and more and more. I will get to in more uh, to more detail later on. Um, let me, however, now uh, consider the uh, the building blocks first, and then we're also going to be jumping a bit back and forth to uh, the code. So the first thing we want to discuss is Hydra and uh, and Lightning. So with Lightning, you're already uh, quite familiar, I think. So let me mention Hydra. So Hydra is a way to uh, do the configurations for your code. So it's a configuration framework. Uh, and it allows you to really keep track of it, to do it elegantly and consistently and uh, all of these things. Uh, and there's a couple of options to do it. So there exists, for example, a structured config, which is more a Python API, uh, which is the one that I implemented in the code. Um, there's a more YAML based one and a validation scheme, which is kind of a mix in between. Um, and the latter is the best for very complicated things, but the structured config is, I think, the easiest. Um, and that's also why I implemented it in the code for now. So let's have a let's have a short look at uh, a bit of the code. So here we see everything. Um, there's a couple of things to mention. So all the Python code is in the hyperparameter searcher folder. Uh, in the scripts folder, we have our uh, bash scripts. So here are the things that I mentioned uh, a little bit ago. This is the thing we're gonna submit with the s bash command. And after that, everything is taken care of for us. Um, so maybe what I'll do is first show you uh, some parts of this s patch script and then uh, give them some names <laughs> and then we'll you know get back to it a bit more and then hopefully we get a feeling for it. So uh, at the start, so only this part you may recognize. So that is a, a slurm batch uh, a little script that tells us 
what should be asked for. So you can see here, it wants one node on the shared partition. There are some tasks. It wants 20 gigs of memory and uh, a certain set of CPUs for one hour. And these two simply tell Slurm where to direct the output of the code. So where it's gonna be the, the standard out and the standard error. Um, so this is a CPU node, right? Because you can see there's clearly no GPUs being asked for. Uh, so that has to happen at another point. And we'll, uh, we'll get to that uh, later. For now, let me mention only one other part, and that's this. Uh, so here we see uh, the line hyperparameters. Now, and this is the one line of code where I meant that you have to change things. So this particular um, uh, bash script is for a grid search. So there is just, you know, it's just an example. These may not be very useful things to search for, but this just shows you what kind of hyperparameters are we going to uh, investigate, right? So here there are two options for this uh, model linear size, and there is two options for how many epochs we're going to run it. Um, and then, of course, there is uh, there's more things, but maybe we'll get back to that later, uh, because for now I want to look a bit at uh, at the Hydra. So let's open the main uh, the main training script. So this is the thing you're going to call for in the command line. You're going to say Python train.py. So I can show you that's actually what happens. No, it's here, Python train.py. Um, and then here we see uh, our Hydra uh, standing. So this is the main Hydra wrapper, uh, wrapper uh, decorator. Um, and this is going to give this main function a certain config, right? A certain way to set up the code, right? The configuration. Um, uh, and which configuration that's going to be? Well, in this case, it's going to look up some kind of uh, OS environment uh, variable. But you can do it in, in many different ways. Um, so then where is, um, where is it uh, implemented? So in this case, I have uh, put all of the configurations in this config folder. So let me just open the main one, which is, uh, which is this guy. Uh, and there's, of course, there's loads of things to go through, and I will not go through everything. So let me just mention, so this is uh, the, uh, the training config that will be passed to this um, main function that I just showed you in the trainer pie. Um, and yeah, let me just nitpick something out of there. So for example, you see here the defaults. So if you do not override anything in a command line interface, um, then it will then Hydra will pick out some defaults for you. So in this case, it will ask for these defaults, which is simply this list that is here on top. And you can, for example, see there is a default for the trainer, which asks for a configuration configuration of single node, single GPU. Now, of course, you may wonder, okay, well, what what is single node, single GPU? Well, then you know that is specified in something below here that says, okay, single node, single GPU. Uh, there is some kind of uh, configuration uh, for this. And that would then be in another file. So now you got to imagine what right, this trainer config is actually here. All right, so if you recall, this is the config folder where all the Hydra stuff is. We were just looking at this file right here uh, and the trainer config, I placed it over here. And then there's all kinds of parameters that I you know, plug in the, the, the trainer. Um, and similarly, for all kind of other stuff here, uh, you know, use the default for all the other stuff, there is also configurations available. Um, and that is a bit what Hydra allows you to do, is to make these configurations and make them in a hierarchical structure uh, and keep track of what is doing uh, what. So uh, let me quickly go back here for a bit. So we looked a little bit now at the structured configs and where they are located in the in the code uh, and how they are passed to the main code. Now, uh, what I didn't mention so far is that every one of these uh, of, of these configurations can be uh, overridden in the command line, mm, which is very convenient. So I show you a one liner here uh, below where I say, OK, I'm going to ask for train.py. But I'm going to say that the GPUs is going to be one. So I'm going to say trainer.gpus is one. And then whatever the config was in the original structured configs that I just showed you will be overridden uh, by this guy. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's one thing of uh, Hydra. 
Um, so let me mention uh, one more thing here. So there is something that is called a sweeper. Uh, and that's actually mostly important for our hyperparameter searches because they determine how we're going to go through all of these uh, hyperparameters that we uh, plug in. Um, so let's uh, let's switch back for a little bit here to the uh, to the code. Um, and if we go uh, and look at, for example, the Bayesian config here, so not the grid config, but the Bayesian. So this is a different one that we looked at a moment ago. Uh, it will look very similar, but there is uh, some tiny differences, namely uh, this line. So here it says I'm going to override the Hydra uh, sweeper. Uh, so the sweeper is, you know, as I mentioned, the guide is going to determine how we're going to uh, go through all the hyperparameters, uh, and I'm going to override it to something called X. Uh, now, probably you have no idea what X is. Well, it's just a name for a particular kind of sweeper. You know, you can uh, plug in all kinds of um, hyperparameters again. So we can look, uh, for example, at the bash script again, which we had seen a moment ago. Here we have hyperparameters, and this one is you know, built for the X sweeper. Uh, and now we see, even though we, we plug in the same choices, uh, it's just an example. We say, okay, you have a choice between this one and this one, and a choice between that one and that one. Now you can do way more than this, you know, it can do ranges. So you can say, I want a range between 100 and 1000. Uh, and obviously you cannot do all of those because that would be an insane amount of compute. But what the X sweeper then will do for you is try out different ones from that range and try to determine what the best one is using Bayesian optimization. Uh, and that's the that's the really the nice thing. So you don't have to put in all of your parameters as a grid, uh, meaning that it has to go through every option, but it will try to optimize it for you. And it will do so using a certain sweeper. So uh, in the other case, the grid search that we looked at before, I didn't override it. So then it actually would default to something called the basic sweeper in Hydra, which is simply a grid search. So it will just you know, submit uh, one option after the other. Uh, it will not do anything fancy at all. Uh, and one other thing you can see here is that I have added something it's called an optimized metric. So that will be the metric that the X sweeper in this case is going to try to uh, optimize. Um, okay, very well. Um, let's see again here. Okay, so yeah, the sweepers, it does uh, this automatic um, hyperparameter searching by, uh, excuse me, by uh, looking at the ranges that you plug in and then taking options from that in the hope to find uh, the best one with regards to a certain uh, metric that gets uh, optimized. Okay, so, so far, uh, Hydra, of course, there is um, a million things more to talk about. Um, but I also uh, encourage you to look a bit through the code and maybe look at the documentation of Hydra. And then also in the tutorial, we will uh, look at some things in more uh, detail. Okay, so the next um, um, building block, so we already mentioned this a bit. Um, it's the uh, slurm based cluster so that's the thing that we are going to use here and you also use um, so slurm i don't know if you know it but it's a simple linux utility for resource management and you know, that is exactly what it does you know slurm automatically takes your job which may be a hyperparameter search or something completely different and it puts them in a queue and makes sure that it's get assigned resources that you ask for uh, and then executes the jobs and automatically uh, deletes everything uh, at the end. Um, and as useful as that is, we want to even make it more useful by saying we want to have our code automatically, you know, submit things to Slurm, right? We want to never have to do in our hyperparameter searches, oh, uh, you know, S batch this one, S run that one, blah, blah, blah. We want to have that automated. Uh, and that is exactly what uh, submitted does. Um, and let me very shortly uh, give you a bit of a code look into where submitted is uh, is hidden in the code because it's a bit hidden, I think. Um, so let's go back to this uh, grid config again. And we're going to look a bit at the default. So if you recall, these are going to be the default 
options for all of these kind of configs that are in here uh, and which one are they going to use now and there's one line here where i want to show you uh the submit it because what we're going to do here is we're going to override the hydra launcher to submit its slurm well and as you can guess that obviously uh, takes care of how hydra is going to submit jobs right because um that's the thing also about hydra so when we enable an option that is called multi-run so i will show you where that is and then we get back to this very shortly um so when we at the end are going to execute our python command there is some option enabled called multi-run so there's a hydra option and that um that tells hydra that we're going to do a hyperparameter search and that Hydra should in some way submit these different configurations uh, one by one as jobs. Now, and normally um, the Hydra launcher, you know, the, the basic launcher will just say again, okay, I'm just gonna submit them all on this machine and I'm not gonna think about anything that I'm doing. Um, but that's not what we want because we wanted to use Slurm, right? So, and that's what we're gonna, that's what we're overriding here. So we're saying the launcher is now gonna be submitted Slurm uh, and submitted is actually a package that takes care of making automatically these submissions for you. So I can show you a little more about this in the launcher config here. Uh, and then we can just have a little look at this guy. Um, and this is the particular configuration that we're going to use for uh, submitted. Um, so submitted is then going to say for each of these jobs that it that it receives, I am going to give you these parameters, you know, and you can change this to whatever you'd like. So you can say, okay, I want a job to uh, last this long, or I want this many GPUs and CPUs and everything, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's also this option to which allows you to tell submitted you can at most have these amount of of jobs running in parallel, which can be useful if the computational resources are limited and shared with other people um okay so that is um most things that i want to say about submitted so one last thing is that we can understand one more part of the bash script now because i have also included here some parameters which are gpus per node cpus per node uh, and they are actually a convenience i i don't have to uh, include them here but it allows you to override them easily so i could say num gpus per node is three four whatever uh, and it is immediately uh, passed here so you can see num gpus per node again um, and that overrides the parameters that i was just showing you and then submit it will make sure that every new job with a new hyperparameter will get that number of gpus that you specified here in the uh, in the file um, so that was a bit what submitted does. So uh, we've seen that it now, you know, it, it takes your code, it receives some kind of hype or some kind of, you know, uh, Python file, and it will automatically make a submission to Slurm using the parameters that we specify for the uh, submitted uh, launcher. Uh, and we can override them in, in, for example, a bash script or the command line. Uh, very well. So maybe one example of what we're actually going to see so here i show one example of a search that i did uh, a little while ago um, and so recall that the first thing we do is ask for a cpu node so in this picture you can look all the way on the bottom and there is one uh one job that looks a little bit different than the rest uh, it's it's on the on the shared partition um and if you uh, recall that's exactly what was in this bash script where we asked for partition shared uh, and this is a CPU node. So this is a hyperparameter master node. It gets called. It looks through what hyperparameters I plugged into the file. And then automatically, you know, Hydra and Submit it will work together to take those hyperparameters and automatically submit new uh, uh, jobs to Slurm with GPUs, right? And those are the 27 jobs that you see above there. So in this particular case, there were 27 hyperparameters to be, uh, to be tested. Uh, so eventually 27 um, uh, jobs are now running. I think all of them had one GPU. Uh, so 27 GPUs were running simultaneously, uh, trying to determine the uh, the hyperparameters, uh, which one is the most 
uh, a high performance one. Uh, yeah, so this is a kind of an example of what you can expect. Now, maybe one thing to note is that in these job IDs, you see that those 27 have a little underscore and then a number. Uh, that's simply because how um, submitted makes these submissions. It makes a so-called task array, uh, and each one of them is just a new row in the uh, array, so to speak. Um, all right, so that is kind of what I wanted to say about the um, Slurm clusters and submitted. Now, the last thing we need to do, because now all the submissions and um, things are arranged already automatically, we want to be able to uh, keep track of what is happening, right? So uh, for this, I like to use a mail flow. Uh, so it's obviously it's for logging, and I really like it for hyperparameter experiments because uh, it allows you to uh, compare different runs. Uh, and in the ML flow, uh, we can actually save uh, checkpoints of each of the models. So each run, there will be checkpoints visible. Uh, there will be a little summary of what the model is. We can look at parameters at curves of accuracy and loss and all of this uh, and i included all of that in the uh, in the example code as well um, but let me show you some of these uh, features right now so i don't think i can um, uh, show everything but i can show something so here we are in the uh, in the ml flow uh, ui again and here we have a a particular experiment which I called hyperparam amnest Bayesian um, and there were four runs in this uh, in this case and you know for each one of those you can click and you can say you know what kind of parameters were in this uh, run you know you can see bed size anything it's kind of locked here we can take a look at metrics you know how is the accuracy uh, continuing over time um, but what is also very interesting for your hyperparameter searches is, of course, you can, uh, let me make the most interesting comparison. Here you can compare uh, two different um, runs. Uh, so we can ignore this a bit for now. So here you see the different parameters. You see we have a different size for one of the uh, model layers. This is not really something that we changed, but it just keeps track of how large the models are. Uh, and one of them had more epochs than uh, the other. And then we can look, for example, at the, I don't know, validation accuracy and, uh, you know, keep track of, of how well they are doing. Uh, obviously, one stops earlier because it only had 10 epochs. Uh, so that uh, that makes sense. And you can look at the losses and you can uh, track whatever you want. Um, and that's a, that's a bit the idea here. So these green markers, again, they mean that the jobs are done. Uh, but as you do very large searches, so this thing can fill up uh, all the way to the bottom and you can just keep comparing stuff and uh, uh, look what's going on. Um, and also, okay, normally, so they are not loaded right now, but normally in this artifact region, this is where the code will also save uh, checkpoints for your model and, and some summaries of, um, of the model and the configuration. Uh, and then you can just immediately uh, download checkpoints from this web uh, based thing and then you know run whatever inference experiments or things you want with it, uh, which is uh, very convenient. Um, all right, so let me give a little uh, recap. So let's go through the goals that we set at the start and see if we have made any progress in how that works. Um, so the first thing we said is we want as little labor as possible. Uh, so we want to change only one line of code. Uh, so if you recall, this is what we did in the bash script. So this is the thing we eventually submit. Um, we're going to change around the uh, hyperparameters there, and then we can just resubmit it automatically. A CPU node is asked for. The CPU node will look at what's the hyperparameters, grab all the nodes in the world that it needs. You know, collect the results and keep it uh, very steady and live on a nice MLflow server. You know, and that last point also immediately uh, helps us with tracking our experiments. Uh, I just showed you the MLflow UI. Um, and another thing we wanted is automated searches. Uh, so this is what the Spatian searches or the X sweeper that we talked about can do. Um, and the scalability is, of course, very uh, present because the code as it stands now uh, with our submitted and, uh, and our Hydra configurations, it can take 
any number of hyperparameters uh, and spawn nodes as it sees fit, right? So there is no uh, limit to uh, uh, scalability uh, here, unless we go extremely crazy. Um, but I think with that, uh, that we have come to the uh, to the end of this use case. So I hope that I have conveyed to you a bit the the, the global ideas of what we want from a large scale hyperparameter uh, search and how we can keep track of it. Um, I would yeah, recommend you to just look through the code a bit and also in the tutorial session we can uh, go through the um, uh, the different building blocks in a bit more detail and understand what is their importance and how uh, are they implemented? All right, uh, good luck. <laughs>